Hello and welcome to our vlog series in conversation with the Doctoral College. I'm Dr Deborah Curiton and I'm the Research Development Manager from the University of Wolverhampton. And I'm Dr Ben Halligan, I'm Director of the Doctoral College. So today's vlog we're going to talk about APR, Annual Progress Review, why it's important um, and how to do it really well. So APR, I think at Wolverhampton there's a little bit of, of confusion about APR because we've recently changed our approach to APR. We've moved from an annual event to a, um, an anniversary of registration events. So people do their, their first APR nine months into, into their doctorate and then an APR 12 months thereafter until their final year of registration when their final APR is nine months late after their, their, the, the previous APR, which gives a six month window to allow us to help and ensure students get a timely completion. So given that, that um, a lot of students are, are now confused about APR, um, can we just give a brief overview of um, what APR is, why it's important? Well, what are your thoughts? Well, all universities will have an annual assessment of the progress of your PhD work yeah. or your professional doctoral work. So very typically, um, you'll be asked to complete a form to give a sample of the work you've done. A panel will be assembled to look at that work and then to talk to you. And the people on that panel won't be your supervisors, they will be external yeah. people. You may know them, they may work in the department. Then they will write a response to your work and that response, that feedback you'll get. And it's an annual checkup and it's another pair of eyes that is looking at the work that can give you a thumbs up, that can give you some advice, that can perhaps uh, encourage you to do things that you weren't thinking about, perhaps confirm um, what your supervisor's saying that you're not sure about and things like that. So it's a very welcome chance, I think, to get another level of feedback. Most universities will um, have a, a number of outcomes that would be around, you know, very good, keep progressing, to we don't think progress is satisfactory, so we're going to ask you to redo the annual progress review. I do find sometimes students will um, enter the Viva, have quite a tough time, be given a resubmission. Yeah. Uh, be told by the examiners that there are problems with this data, that this chapter doesn't make sense, and so on. And they will feel a bit frustrated that this wasn't picked up earlier. Yeah. So if somebody is asked to do that in your progress review again, um, it's for the betterment of their progression. And it's to avoid these problems happening at the Viva by picking them up earlier on and sorting them out earlier on. So it's a developmental thing as well. I think maybe it's wrong to consider it as a test. It's not a test. And it's wrong to consider it as some bureaucratic red tape matter. It, it isn't. What I think we want is the student to go through the APR on the anniversary and to come out the other side knowing that they've done a year's, of work, a year's worth of work and it's been given the thumbs up and now they're free to enter into the second year or the third year and to progress. So usually the students fill out a report, um, the examiners or independent assessors, they're called independent assessors here, will read that report, they'll read some of the student's work mm -hmm. um, and then the student will give a presentation about their progress and the assessors will ask some questions about uh, about the work that the student's doing, about the work that they've read. So it's looking at the progress made and the quality of the work. Um, at Wolverhampton, um, the outcomes of the APR are proceed. Um, some minor minor corrections. So if the the you know if the independent assessors read the research questions and they think actually those two research questions sound the same, maybe they'll they'll ask you to to think about the wording of your research questions. Those, those minor tweaks um, are, are conversations with, with the students and, and supervisors and are managed by the supervisory team. 
or students could be asked to proceed with caution. Mm. So proceed with caution is where we feel that the, there's an issue with the work, the quality of the work, the level of the work, it's not quite hitting the level 8 that we would expect it to be hitting, um, or the, the learning outcomes of a doctorate, um, or that the student hasn't made enough progress. And what happens then is that there's a meeting with supervisor, student and the postgraduate research tutor and an action plan is put into place to help the student be brought back up to speed to where they should be at this particular point um, of, of their, their journey. So it's that opportunity really to, as you say, have another pair of eyes, look at your work but also the opportunity to stop practicing defending your work, mm. ready for, for when you go into your, your biver and have to def defend it for real, <laughs> um, so to speak. So, it, you know, it, it is should actually be seen as um, quite a positive opportunity to discuss your work with people who are really interested in it. You don't often get those opportunities beyond your supervisory team. So, you know, he, you're going to have, what, 20 minutes, half an hour, where you sit down and and have a good talk about your research, what you're doing, why you're doing it, what's really important about it, what you're enjoying about it. And the supervisor can work on the feedback as well, because yeah. for him or her it might confirm the feedback they've been given to the student to make confirm the direction that's been taken, yeah. things like that. I mean, I think it's a very important point you make about the opportunity. I mean, sometimes you'll have a PhD student who will resit every annual um, assessment, so they'll be called back into the room to talk again about their work, to do a presentation, to defend their work, so that by the time that they actually go to the Viva, they've had maybe six opportunities to stand in front of a panel and to talk about their work and to defend it. And those people at that point are highly adept at defending their work. They've mm -hmm. had absolute experience which they can uh, use for a successful Viva the latter stages, um, or the latter APRs at Wolverhampton, we actually ask students mm. to do a mini viva, which is only going to be about 20 minutes, but where the examiners sit down with a chapter of, of your thesis, or the internal assessors, um, independent assessors, sorry, sit down with a, a chapter of your, your thesis and ask you viva type questions. So um, you've got more and more opportunities of defending your work through the throughout mm. um, the various APRs, so they, they change slightly with with the mm. the expectations of each APR, and again this should help you as a candidate um, benchmark your progress because it's showing you know when when you do your first APR at like nine months, yeah you are going to be able to talk about your work for for, for five ten minutes, but. You know, a few years later, you're actually sitting down with um, um, a, a chapter that is more than likely going into your thesis in that, that shape or with a few tweaks that you've been able to sit and defend your decisions, um, your reading, and use your expertise in that area to support what you've done and why you've done it. Absolutely. I think also with APR, the other thing that often gets forgotten about are things like action plans and um, personal development plans. And they are an important part of APR because your action plan shows what, you're, what you've done and that you're on time and what you're planning to do to continue to keep your, your doctorate um, on time and you complete in a timely fashion. So at Wolverhampton, if you don't complete in a timely fashion, we don't give you an extension, you fail. So do you know, do do take your planning seriously. But in order to make progress and continue making progress, you need to be doing that skills development, that knowledge development um, alongside your doctorate. You need to be learning how to do the activities that you've got to implement as part of your doctorate. So if you're at the beginning of your doctorate and you're expected to write a literature review, you need the skills to search the literature, you need the skills to analyse the literature, you need to know what the databases are, you need to know how you use the software that helps you manage your references, 
you need to know how to write a, um, a literature review and those are offered through the um, researchers development program um, so you need to be looking at which parts of that those skill sets that you need to, to develop and that's where your 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 uh, PDP or personal development plan is comes in and why it's really important that it's part of the APR process it's reviewed as part of the APR process because your assessors are going to know where you are they're going to see from your plan what you're planning to do but they also want to see how that's underpinned by your development your holistic development as a researcher so it's very much a developmental thing but it's also a milestone it is it allows you to say i've now finished year, year one i finished year two and i'm into the next year your APR, in, in, I suppose if you're looking at it compared to your, an undergraduate degree, it's like your end of year exams. Mm. Um, slightly different because obviously you're not sitting with a piece of paper writing things down and then somebody's coming along and marking it. You're actually having that conversation with people who are um, your peers because you're, you're part of that peer group. You are um, you're part of that research group. Um, they may be slightly more experienced peers, but they are your peers. So that's really how the annual progress review functions. Yeah. So don't be scared of it. Um, I, you know, my advice would be, um, don't see it as red tape or um, something you've got to get out of the way. You know, embrace it. Mm. Um, see it as a, a learning opportunity. See it as the opportunity to talk about your research and to expand. Um, your opportunities of disseminating your work because your assessors aren't going to know about your research but if they start to understand about your research they may well be making links between what they do and what you do and holding that in mind for the future. Okay. okay. So uh, thank you for listening that's the end of, of this vlog and watch out for further vlogs from us um, we release vlogs every Friday so Follow our, our channel and um, get updates when we release a new vlog. Okay, bye.